Welcome to the NBA first round mock draft 2022 of the Triple Play Fantasy platform. I'm your host, Coach James Lewis, I'm bringing my partner in crime, Kevin Coleman from the West Coast. I'm representing Baltimore, Maryland. Um, we're going to go pick by pick through the first round. Uh, I'll be going first because um, I called it. <laughs> and uh, and Kevin's the the older veteran, so he, he's going to go second and um, provide those even picks. Um, Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing good. I don't like you call me the older veteran, you dick, because I am barely <laughs> – I'm pretty sure you and me are very – I think we're the same age. So um, I, maybe – you know, I am the veteran coach. We'll say that. I've been coaching longer than you. That's how I'm going to put it. You look older than me. Plus, uh, this is the same guy who decided that Jalen Green was the, the number one prospect last year. Let's just for the record, I went Cade Cunningham. So let's see if the jury's still out on that one, baby. You can duplicate okay. it. I'll, the jury's I'll still give out you that. On that one. Yeah. Um, and much like uh, Evan Mobley here, I'm at number one pick uh, as I go back and forth with my big board and now in the mock draft. I'm selecting uh, Chet Holmgren, uh, all seven foot tall, uh, 195 pounds, uh, soaking wet. Um, that is kind of your concern here is um, his his length is there. He's, he's seven six with the wingspan, but uh, he he is skinny. I, I would give it to him that he is he is tough. Uh, he shows uh, winning ability both on both ends. He can really protect the interior. I see him playing much like Evan Mobley in that he won't guard maybe the biggest guy, but he will definitely be in the paint and help, and he, he can block three-pointers. Uh, I think offensively he he's he needs some help as far as what his moves. Yeah. Uh, you've seen him uh, for Gonzaga basically kind of being a lob threat. Um, it, I can see him being a good passer on the next level, so put him in handoffs. Um, I see him developing his game. I think he's a winner. Um, so I would love Chet Holmgren, especially with a team like maybe Detroit, if they get lucky again, uh, pair him with a, with a Cade Cunningham. I think cool. he, he can fit well with um, a lot of teams at the top there. I think that the number one pick is going to determine on the team. Um, and there are three guys in the motion. So I'm going to send it to Kev for pick number two. Well, you know, I want Chet to go Houston. That would be that would be fun. Him and my boy Jalen and. And and they would be able to, you know, I, I think I think that'd be a good fit. I know they got their pieces there, but they're just rebuilding all around. I think that would be interesting in terms of where they're going to go. Um, I don't think you can go wrong. I think there's a consensus top four, right, Coach? You feel like there's yeah. a consensus top four right now. So like 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 Coach is talking about, it really comes down to when I'm looking at it, who 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 gets those teams there? So if the Rockets, Magic, Pistons, Thunder in there, where are they going to fill? Um, to me, if I'm going to pick second, I got to go with my boy Von Carroll and Paulo and from Duke. And I know that I'm a Duke guy, so I'm going to be, you know, haters out there are going to say I'm just that guy. But I just think when you watch him play, he's physical. He's got the size that you like to see. I think he can improve his three-point percentage, which, hey, he can score from three levels. Like, he's got a nice mid-range game, which I think is I think is really one of his things that you like to see. He's got that really smooth pull-up. If he can do that, I think he can create space, too, in the mid-post. Like, when you watch him play, I've watched him play almost every game this year. He's able to do that. I think if he can hit that 30% clip from three-point but get it up to, like, 35 in the NBA, which you know he's going to, I do like that. He's got natural strength, low center of gravity. He can play really bully ball when you watch him play i think the the concern i have with von carroll and and the thing that i think that uh, me and coach talked about is his he's that athletic the athleticism is there kind of but i wouldn't say he's above the rim you know what i mean like he's he's there he can jump and catch a jump point do those type of things but i think the thing i worry about is like his ability to defend and i know they don't defend in the nba i get it like i've watched the nba long enough to know that but he doesn't really offer rim protection he doesn't really offer that ability to kind of come out on guys on the on the perimeter and is he going to be able to guard out there pick and roll situations all that stuff that they like to do in the nba so i think that while i think he's very solid I wouldn't necessarily say he has the highest ceiling of all these guys. Like he's a very solid prospect. He's going to be there. But if a team's drafting at two, are you going to draft him and say, okay, maybe we can develop that? Or are you worried about his ceiling? And I think that's a question mark. And I, I'm still going to draft him at two because I do think he's a very solid player. But I think that some of these other guys may have, may offer a higher ceiling. Yeah. And he's unbelievable in transition. The ball yeah. gets sticky with him though. Um, you want him to kind of be a focal point of the offense, but in in like an offense like Phoenix runs where it's like you have 0.5 seconds to make a decision. I think he would struggle 
there a little bit. Um, he shows signs of um, being a good passer. He did turn the ball over more times than he had dimes. Um, that's a bit concerning. But the size, it I mean, 6'10", 250 with the moves that he has is rare to see somebody that size um, and have the offense ability that he does. Uh, I, I do. feel like he's got good fo- footwork for his yeah, size. I don't, I don't want to cut you off. I, I want to say that Coach K is overrated as shit. So everybody out there, like I'm a Duke fan. He did not put Boncaro in the best spots this year. Like, he didn't. And I'm going to – the offense is trash. It has been trash. If Shire was the coach, it would have been a lot better. Like, it was literally like, okay, we need a bucket. Boncaro, go get one. And more than times he did. So, that is something to see. He can create for himself. Um, so, he did develop there. But being in a system and allowing himself to, I do think he's going to have to develop there because there's no system at Duke. There is no offensive system at Duke. And any Duke fan out there that's watching this, you want to come at me, you can find me. My Twitter's right there. That that is not true. Like he, Coach K has struggled in that area, so I think Boncaro is going to have to figure out okay what system fits him best. Can he pick up on it? Because it's no longer just you know how high, in high school ball. I coach high school ball. It's hey best athlete, let's go. Like and that's probably what, that's what he did in high school. Then in college, you got to do the same thing. Now, how does he fit in that system? I think that's the question. Yeah, but what's worse, him or Bruce Pearl? Because Auburn's <laughs> offense was garbage as well, and it just led to Jabari Smith into the shot clock hopefully let's get 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 a bucket please and sometimes he would be miraculous in that but you've seen both um players kind of have to just get theirs within the offense um so and i i feel like aj griffin was kind of the benefit of some of those play calls they would Mm -hmm. run double screens for him and then if it didn't work it was just like okay somebody (laughs) bail me out uh but he was spectacular in the in-state a double A tournament and he showed that he's a gamer. So um, I could see a team like Orlando falling in love. And if they had the one pick, they might get a, that guy. Now um, somebody that was featured as my top person on my big board, uh, Jabari Smith. I think he had, he's the best shooter in the draft being 6'10 and having that high release. Uh, he, he shows that he's made tough shots. Uh, he shot 43% from three, um, giving you a block and a steal. So he shows defensive uh, versatility as well. He's he's yeah. got some good length at, at 6'10". I think he can plug and play with a lot of different um, teams. And I think that because he can stretch the floor, uh, he can play with a lot of different lineups. So I I just really like uh, Jabari Smith's uh, toughness. He, he looks like he, he wants the ball. Um, he looks like he's going to get better because he needs to get better, especially with his ball handling moves. Uh, he doesn't really have too much, but, you know, his over the shoulder uh, spin in a post, he creates a little bit of separation there. Uh, he's still young. He's like 18. Yeah. Um, I just I, I think he's got he comes from good stock. His father played in the NBA. And um, I think he'd be very happy with a top three pick. And I could see I know you you mentioned Chet um, going to Houston. but I could see them fall in love with a a Jabari Smith as well to kind of compliment uh, Jalen Green. Yeah, and he might fit that offense a little bit better, right? Like, and, yeah. and I, I think he would. And no, I, I think that the really reality of it is these top four guys: Smith, Homer, and Ivy, which we'll talk about in a second, and Boncaro. But when you look at Smith, he's got to he's got to round out his game. I think you hit that on the head with that. I mean, he's good. Um, where does that fit come in? Maybe get a little stronger. I love his wingspan. Seven foot wingspan's legit. Like, I mean, he's got the things that you like to see, the skills. Uh, so with four, at pick four for me, it's Jaden Ivey, right? Like, I think it's got to be. You know, young kid out of Purdue. Um, you know, he is – He's, you know, they throw around like elite athlete, but Iden is an athlete. Like he's an elite level athlete when you watch him play. I love and, he, his- and not to, to talk over you, but out of the three people we mentioned, he's far away more explosive than all those guys. And he's a guard, and it's a guard driven league. So you know, he might even squeeze above four, but I think he's the clear guy here. Oh, I could see him testing the shit out of these numbers and, like, teams falling in love with him in the top three, 100%. Like, this dude's got it, and when you watch him play, too, I think, you know, when you see him, too, he's got a different gear that most guards don't have when you watch mm-hmm. him go. He's in the open lane a lot. He's freaking good defensively, too. I think he's very – he yes. kind of reminds me of, like, 
I hate to say it because I hate this dude, Pat Bev. Coach knows I hate Pat Bev, really. but <laughs> he, he's got that dog in him, right? He has that, like, that ability to guard. I think he does good help defense. When you watch the tape and you watch him play, long arms, good help defense, pesky, those type of things. Uh, he gets to the lane quick. I know I've seen a ton of comps about Ja Morant. I mean, I've, I've seen it. Like, Ja. Like, he's Ja. He's Ja Jr., all these things. Yeah, he's the workout partner. He's, he's, yeah. he's seen to do workouts with him, and I guess because of his leaping ability and his ability to put people on posters as we've seen uh, yeah that's kind of the comparison but John Moran is way different with his ability to create offense for other people and yeah but coming out of uh, college I would say that generally speaking both these guys are pretty you know as far as like a level of like you know prospect I think it's pretty close Jaw's definitely gotten better I love Jaw, obviously um but if, if he can improve that I mean he has a much improved three-point shooting as you saw like you know if you get in that 35 36 percent range if you get to 40 that'd be amazing uh knockdown shooter I believe he can be there I think he can be efficient there if he can get, become a knockdown shooter and open when he can um but you know I saw somebody when I was watching a watching a show on this NBA and they, they were saying like he's like a shade of Dwayne Wade-ish like that ability to have that and, and kind of create for himself also get in the lane passing lanes well it's a good defender average player like in terms of defense like if he can do that and, and be consistent there i think he's really good and i think that like you said this is a you know a guard wing driven league if he can get out there and he can do those things and he can also be a you know primary point um in certain areas too where they can use him as a facilitator i think that he opens up roster construction for your team so if you plug him and play him then you have lineup and you can have different lineups out there and he's clearly getting better. Last year, if he came out, he'd have been a first-round pick on my board. But now, you know, he made a great decision going back to school. Yeah. Team US, the Team USA play helped his confidence. Uh, you saw that early, and you saw him in late shot clock situations, one in the ball. Um, you, you mentioned um, D. Wade, uh, his body size, similar, I, I would I would assume. And Donovan Mitchell reminds me of a little bit. Uh, he... Is really good he was really bad against st peter's he was mentally frustrated that kind of makes me scratch my head a little bit because it was the biggest game of his life and he let like some like he had six turnovers and he just he got a couple bad fouls he just his body language was bad and yeah. you know purdue ended up going down um but that's just one game because throughout the whole season he was consistent and and damn good um at five speaking this is of fun this is fun right here. This is where we're going to get all off of consensus right here. Because top four, top four is what we know it, but five is where we're going to start seeing some different players out here. And for me, I'm going Keegan Murray, the, the safest pick here at five. <laughs> when you got A.J. Griffin, you got Sharp, you got Matherin, David. To me, Keegan Murray with his 24 points a game, nine boards, 55% from the field. You knew the ball was going in his hand, and he delivered consistently. Uh, he shows the ability to guard multiple positions. He is not wowing you athletically, but I think he just thinks the game uh, faster and better than other players. Of course, he's I, I think he's 21, going close to 22, so he's a little bit one of the more older players in the, in the top of this draft. Uh, but I think that you have a sure thing uh, starter. Um, you don't have a star here, but I – I I really love Keegan Murray, and as a safe pick, uh, yes, this depends on you know what team it is. But if I'm like the Blazers or something, I would love to to pair a Keegan Murray with the, with a Damian Lillard um, and see how that looks because he just he, he can come off picks well. Uh, he has a nice little turnaround and he high release. Uh, it's six eight and he's and he's heavy. He's got good size. So give me Keegan Murray at five. Do you think he's Scotty Barnes ish or no? I don't think he has that that freak athleticism that okay. Scotty Barnes has in uh, kind of his ability to guard. Um, he's a little bit uh, lower demeanor player. Not okay. like it's just Scotty Barnes' motor is unmatched. And I'm not questioning Keegan Murray's motor. I just think he's just a little bit more, I guess, composed that way. Um, but he doesn't have that playmaking that that Scotty has either. I think he's more of like a a three and D shooter. Okay. Um, plus okay no i just want i just wanted us to i want to plug us because we were big on scotty barnes last year and uh and uh, we hit that one on the head by the way all right uh, let's uh let's look at six and i you, you go safe and you know me i don't like <laughs> go, i'm not a big safe guy i'm gonna go shade and sharp so i'm gonna go uh kid out of kentucky obviously didn't play this year because he reclassified you know I, when you watch him play you know he was the number one player of the class of 2022 from canada and they talk about him 
big, quick, you know, 6'6", 215. Uh, you know, he wasn't a big name until he actually, like, he jumped up the ranking. So he's still got raw. So when you're talking about this, he's got he's he's raw. But he's got a strong build. Uh, I wouldn't say, like, he's an elite-level athlete. But when you watch him play, man, he's got bounce. And I think that he has that ability to kind of separate himself as a slasher, especially in, in this. He's a good off-ball cutter you know, takes advantage of that, finishes well around the rim. I think he's got to improve his shooting, but I think he will. I think he's got to develop ball handling, playmaking, outside game. Like, those things are going to progress. Obviously, him not playing, you're probably looking at a guy that if you're going to drop him in the top 10, and this is a this is a home run pick. Like, if I can get this guy, go put him in the G League maybe, go put him somewhere where he's going to develop, kind of move and move, kind of like Kaminga, right, like what we saw this year. Like, if he can be that guy that we put him there, see that development like you're realistically with sharp you could be getting the number one player in the draft in the in the, in the later in the last you know top 10 and if he can develop into the right player that you think and gets in the right system i think he could be the best player in this draft and there are no guarantees on whether he is coming out or he's going back i know coach cal would love for him to come back and that's kind of what he's been talking about that he would yeah. be the number one guy and then he's going to go number one next year if he does do that um but when you're in the workout situations and you have a guarantee, you know, you picked them at six, but you have a guarantee probably, you know, seven uh, deep. Do you, do you just go to the NBA if this is your dream? I mean, most kids in his situation are going to go pro, and maybe that's why he didn't play later in the season. Um, but Shade and Sharp, he's, six, he's just that prototypical shooting guard size. Um, I think he has an ability to be elite. Um, shooter, not just off the catch, but off the dribble as well. And he is very intriguing. So I, I'm not mad at you um, picking six. I thought you might have gone with a dookie, um, but it's <laughs> I'll okay. Let you pick him. I'll let you take it. Uh, we'll see how far he d- drops because I am not picking him here. Um, at number seven, uh, Ben Matherin. Now, you mentioned Pat Bev earlier. This guy just has that fight in motor that you're looking for he he shows that he can be a really good uh spot up shooter transition he runs very well he's got uh pretty good explosiveness uh six six to ten he's another person much like uh Jaden Ivy who last year he would this guy would have been a first round pick um but Benedict Matherin took his game to a new level took Arizona to a number one seed uh he was the bona fide alpha of that team who's got uh, Coloco and Terry, some other guys that are going to be in NBA uh, against TCU. We saw that full-fledged, 30 points, eight eight boards, four assists, two two steals in that that NCAA tournament game. And to me, I I just see him rising and rising because I see just more people going to fall in love with him. And once he does his workouts, he's going to show that he wants it more than other kids. Uh, I think his performance with uh, Team Canada in the summer was impressive, and he he took a huge step forward. Uh, I like I really like Ben Matherin, so I don't mind getting him at seven. And he's somewhere from like seven to twelve almost uh, mocks, um, but I could see somebody at five get in because that's kind of where it drops off after Ivy. I, I, what do you what do you think of this comp, Quentin Richardson? You like Quentin Richardson for him? I, I I like the, the shooting part of it. Now, Quentin yeah. Richardson was an elite rebounder, which I see a little bit of, of Johnny Davis coming in a okay. little bit. Uh, but, shoot, Quentin Richardson was a, a damn good pro for a long time. So he was. That hey. part I see is he's a starting two guard in this NBA, and he can be fit, and he's tough. I'm going to tell you right now, Quentin Richardson doesn't get the love that he deserves because that dude on 2K back in the day was a beast. All right, let's uh, – Are we? <laughs> where am I? Am I, am I eight now? Yeah, you're eight. You're evens. Oh, you're going to make me take my guy, and um, I'm going to take Adrian Griffin. So all I'm right. going to – I just don't want to be that guy. That's that gross. All no, these just... Duke guys, Coach. <laughs> but I will. But I'll, I will. So when you're looking at him, I think, you know, obviously – the numbers don't tell everything about AJ Griffin. Like when you're looking at kind of what he did, I think he has, you know, good free throw percentage. You can see there. He's a light out shooter though. Right. So if you're going to stand on anything, he can shoot the shit out of the ball. And if you're looking at the NBA, he's going to translate very well to that. Um, He has had some injury concerns. I like that. I think he has pretty good, nice, you know, athleticism for the most part. He's got good frame. He's got some natural talent. Dude looks like a linebacker out there. Um, but he gets well off well. He can defend, I think. He's got some explosion there. But he, the biggest thing about him, I mean, he's going to carve out space in the lane. I think he does a good job of that for the most part. He's got a good quick first step. He can shoot. Go ahead and say it. He has no moves. He's no moves, though. So, like, 
Well, we were talking about pre-show, and, and this is where I, I get concerned with AJ. Is like, you know, everything's a straight-line guy. I've coached straight-line guys before. Like, I, And I, it's one of those things where it does limit their ability to create separation. And you saw it in the tournament. AJ struggled creating separation against defenders in the tournament, and that's a real thing. Um, and when you're looking at that from an NBA perspective, that worries me. So that means, okay, how are we going to fit him on a team? Does, is he worth the top 10 pick? I think based on the talent on the board, yes, because of his shooting. If a kid can shoot like he can, he's going to find his way out there. But again, it limits his ceiling, right? Like I do think that it's going to have that limitation on that. And he's got to be able to have some type of wiggle out there. But he doesn't. He, I don't think he's going to have it because I just think his build, what he has, this is who he's going to be kind of like in the NBA. Uh, and I think he can improve, obviously. But I do think I'm worried about it. 6'6", six, six, uh, 220. He's yeah. got very good size to be able to switch on defenders. Um, he shows some explosiveness as well, kind of with like his freak uh, twitch uh, muscle fibers that uh, I think are hard to duplicate in players it, it is he gets comp to Jimmy Butler because of his size, I yeah. guess. Um, Probably which, because of the athleticism too, a little bit. Yeah. Like and just, Jimmy developed his offensive game. Uh, he did. This is a far from a, you know, a finalized product and he's very young and, you know, his dad, Adrian played in the league a long time and uh, his son, AJ Griffin is just a lot more athletic and I could see teams falling in love with him at five, but um, the concerns that you mentioned about him just being able to create a bucket himself, he just doesn't have that yet. Uh, but he's an intriguing prospect, and um, I think that he's somebody in the right system he could develop like Toronto would love to have an, yeah. another guy like this that they could just develop over the years and who shoot, maybe, you know, OKC um, is in that situation since they probably have like five first-round picks. Um, I would choose one of them to get AJ Griffin because you got to just go for somebody that has promise. And they hit on on Giddy, so shout out um, Coach Kevin Coleman, who's big on Josh Giddy last That's year. That's right. Um, oh, Giddy, the youngest player ever to have a triple double, and he looks like a stud. Going for all it. you haters out there, all you haters, yes, yes. Kevin Coleman reads uh, his the comments that you leave, <laughs> and he takes them personally sometimes. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the only way to do it. All right, who you got at nine, Coach? At nine, um, at Nina, give me a Johnny D, Johnny Davis from Wisconsin. So here, another big 10 player and nobody played bigger than Johnny Davis against the best competition than he did. Uh, 37 points, 14 boards, four, four dimes, two steals, two blocks uh, at Purdue. Of course they played like uh, three times. And uh, he, to me, because of being the focal point, um, offensively, defensive through the defense through everything at him. Um, so he really had to be very smart to still continue to score. And he averaged 20 a game. It slowed a little bit down, down the stretch. Uh, but it's, it's free throw percentage being 79. I think he'll be a better, more efficient shooter on the NBA level uh -huh. with everything spread out. Uh, he does have some moves. Um, he's, he's a very good, um, uh, person to come off picks. I, He's like Rip Hamilton as far as like he creates that separation there and then he goes down hill on you and he can still pull up at 6'5", uh, 195. Uh, he made a huge jump from freshman to sophomore year. I didn't really have him on my my draft boards, but all season uh, he continued um, to bang on the door and prove that he is a top 10 pick in this draft. Yeah, I like that pick. I'm glad you picked him because I wanted to take this next guy um, at, okay. at 10. And I actually thought about taking him at 8, uh, to be honest with you. But uh, Jalen Durant and from uh, Memphis. This kid is an old-school player, Coach. This should be <laughs> – this is you and me. This is back in the day when we we love these guys. But, you know, when you're looking at him, I still think that he has, like, lottery, like, top six potential when you're looking at him, what he does. I yeah. know that he doesn't have, like, the offensive game. So that's one of those things you're going to look. He's the best rebounder in college basketball. I don't care what anybody says. Dude was a man. Uh, Oscar a, Shibe is the best rebounder in college basketball, but anyway, Jalen Durant is the best rebounder in college basketball. But you know, when he has his biggest strengths, I think he's got good length and he's got that. He's not going to be a flashy player, right? I think he does have some good mid mid range game though. Like I think it'll improve. I think he's going to get there to where he's going to get coaching an NBA, what they want him to do there. But he's a big. He's going to score in the post, putbacks, alley oops. He has that role, and I think that the NBA. Even though we've seen the NBA drift 
back and forth from these guys. I do think they have a role for him. I think he's solid. I think he can be an X factor defensively. And I think that's something that we look at and especially in the playoffs. I do think he's athletic enough to stay with guards. I love everything about this kid. And I think it's just one of those things. If you can get him at 10, uh, 10 to 14, somewhere in that range, I think that he's going to surprise some people. I, I like Jalen Duran. Um, he's a man amongst boys out there. 6'11", 250. 7'5", seven, seven, wingspan coach. I mean, it's spectacular. He has uh, some abilities that could make him switchable to defend and develop much like uh, Bam out of Bayou with the like the body size. But he's even um, he's even bigger um, and he's very, very good at going up and catching the lob. And with the, the pick and dives that is very popular in the NBA, you can still find a role. He can't shoot at all, though. That okay. is concerning. And the, yes, he's a throwback big. Uh but I mean, the, that's the only concern when we're looking at a lot of these big players. I think this is a big, uh, big man draft, and he might be the top one. Uh, although there is a guy, and I'm gonna have to go ahead and steal a dookie. Uh, Mark Williams was just spectacular whoa, whoa. in the NCAA. Yes, I know. So at, at 11, um, I'm sneaking in Mark Williams. Uh, to me, he might even uh, a leapfrog. Uh, your boy Jalen, because of his he's, he's seven foot. I think he in the interior is a better defender. Um, I don't know overall if he's a better defender. He doesn't have quite the same lateral ability, but um, he is a big athlete. Uh, and he showed out in the tournament, completely destroyed Syracuse when he had 28 points, 12 boards, three blocks, and you know, 72% from the field. Yeah, all his shots are are in the paint, but I think he finishes better. Um, then Jalen Duran um, against Bigs in the paint. Um, so I think that's that's. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take Mark Williams, and I guess I kind of just said he's better than Jalen Duran. I don't know. I might have to eat that in a couple years, but um, that's who hey. I'm getting. I'm 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 climb, he climbed up the the board for me, and I'm sticking with Mark Williams. I, I, I like Mark. I've always thought he was there. I do worry about him being soft as uh, Coach K called him multiple times on the bench when you watch him play. Like, I do think – I saw it. Like, he's like he, – he, I remember, the, you know, a couple of times where he's like, oh, he's soft, and, like, he's got to fix that. But if you're looking at – I just want you, you know – well, I, I don't even know where it's at because it's so far down there. Like, look at this frame, okay, with Mark. <laughs> and then if we look at uh, our boy here, you know, like, that, to me, I think it's close. I do I do say – you you bring up good points. I think he's going to be a value. Um, but, you know. You know, I'm just glad you didn't draft my guy. So let's go to 12, right? We're at 12? Yep. Ty Ty. Take a Ty Ty right now so you don't take him off my board. Uh, I love Ty Ty. He's one of my favorite uh, just in terms of just what he was able to do this year. You know, 12 points, obviously, three three bound, three assists. I know they lost, okay, in a, in a tough game in the tournament. He's got good handles. He was bad. He was, but yeah, well, thanks, coach. I know that. But we don't, we don't, we don't judge people off of one St. game. St. Peter's right? takes okay. down another victim. Um, but you know, he's lighting quick. I think he's got good scoring in, um, instincts. He's, he's in an up-tempo game. If he goes to a team that has that, I think that'd be good. I think he's a very good shooter from the outside. 35% obviously the season. Uh, he gets separation pretty well. He needs to be more consistent on a shot. I, you know, when you watch him play, obviously a lot of these kids can, uh, now I think he's got good instincts too defensively. I think he's a winner. He's one of those guys that you put out there and he's going to game. And I think he's a gamer. So for me, I, I fall in love with these guys because these are the guys I want to coach. And I know that that sounds really dumb, but in me personally, like I do think he can create a lot of pick and roll situations. He knows how to find his guys. I think that he fits the NBA very, very good. And it's rare you see a point, the first point guard going off the board at 12. I mean, you can make an argument that Jaden Ivey um, is, is going to be a one yeah. on the next level. Uh, but this is, I guess, your first point guard, and uh, Kentucky is point guard university. Why not? Why not choose a guy? He, I think, he battled through uh, some injuries yeah. throughout the season and that kind of plagued him. Uh, I think he came back a little too early, uh, but I like what I see with Ty Ty, and I could see him going top ten um, based on drafting for the future. He shows that he can play make with that g game against Georgia where he had seventeen dimes. So, um, and he rebounds well at, at a small guy, and he's a competitor. But you said winner. And at 13, um, there's nobody that really is more of a winner at the end as he cut down the nets. Ochai Agabi of Kansas made a huge, huge jump from that junior 
to senior year. Uh, and he led them all seasons from day one, game one, clutch situations. Uh, he was filling it up against Texas Tech. <laughs> he had 37.7 rebounds. But that was one of many games where, you know, he, the ball went in his hands and, and he exploded. Now, he wasn't like the huge scoring um, punch in the tournament, although he won MOP. Um, but he was doing other things that affected the game of winning, and he can really shoot it off the catch um, and off the dribble. So I like uh, Oche Agabi. I think he's a, a guaranteed NBA player for a while. Uh, we'll see if he if he falls in line with that starter, like first couple guys off the bench. But I think you got a bona fide NBA player in Oche Agabi and somebody that showed that he is a winner and he's about the team. I, I think that's a reach, Coach. I'm just going to be honest. Like, I, I like him. I just – do you think he's athletic enough? He, he, I, I feel like he's a tweener. Like, I just – I feel like he's a tweener. But I guess we're at what? What did we just pick at? 14? Yeah. Um, like, so I guess I don't hate it. I just I, – I wonder how well his game – we've seen these guys before, Coach. We've seen these guys every year. But I, I think you're right in terms of what he's been able to do. Like, I, I do like that about him. Um, and he is a winner, obviously. I'm glad, Shout out. Way to beat the Tar Heels because I hate the shit out of Tar Heels. But um, I think uh, I just worry about him being a tweener. All right. All right. Let, uh, let us go to my next pick. I'm going to pick, you know, when I was looking at the board, it's getting interesting because I coach is just reaching all over the hell of the place and making my board all mess. Uh, but, you know, to me, I'm going to, you know, I'm actually going to take Malachi. So Malachi, I think, is Branham. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, Malachi Branham. Okay, well, you know, shit happens. All right, so, you know, when you're looking at him, okay, he's a hard-nosed, you know, garden wing. I think he's got good effort when you when we watched him play last year. I think the thing that stands out for me is, like, hey, this three-point percentage, shooting over 40%. Obviously, he finished there. At one point, he was shooting over 45% uh, on the season, 50% from the field. I think those are sensational numbers when you're looking at a play. Uh, I think he's got a good mid-range game. I think he knows how to get his own shot. He's got really good handles. Uh, a lot. He does a lot of things well. Like, overall, defensive end, good. Boards well. Natural leader. He's strong. He's athletic. He does all the right things. He's in the right spots. He's a good player. Um, to me, he's just a very solid prospect. And at, at this spot, I'll take him. All right. So you get Malachi Branham at 14. Uh, pick 15. I don't know how he's falling this far. I don't think he will come draft night. That's Dyson Daniels of G League Ignite. Uh, really showed out in I almost NBA All-Star Weekend. Pick, by the way. What's that? I almost picked him last pick. But I wanted you to talk about him. I wanted you to get your boy Dyson. Okay, um, so the, the Australian native um, is just a very polished uh, player. He proves that he could play with the ball in his hands and the ball off of his hands. Uh, he can pass the ball full court. Um, he can defend um, at a high level. He kind of has an awkward looking shot, and I think that it will develop. But his, his IQ, his ability to cut, I think he's just a winning player. Uh, he reminds me a little bit of uh, Chris Duarte, but at a younger age, as far as he's not just a shooter, uh, he can play make as well. And I think that he has intangibles of a winning player. So I like Dyson Daniels. I like where he's going in the future. And I thought that uh, he, at the end of the day, the G League night, uh, he was the one who benefited the most playing around some of these other really talented guys and some people yeah. like um, Hardy, who's who's fallen in um, Bochamp that we haven't mentioned yet. Uh, Dyson Daniels, I see him in top 10 in a lot of people's mock drafts. So this is be a, a low one for us. I like Dyson, though. Like, in, it, like if you're looking at what he was able to do. I think those international guys, the G League stuff, like, I, I have a lot of, like, I have a lot of love for him. I think that Giddy is a good, like, hey, maybe he can be that guy that steps up and, and goes and does that, especially because he played in the G League already. Um, all right, let's uh, let's go to my guy, uh, Jeremy Sohan from Baylor. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and take him here. Obviously, power forward, big, bigger kid, 6'9", 230. I know the numbers aren't going to always say, like, Hey, I think he's a combo forward, in my opinion. I think he's very talented. You know, uh, I thought he was having top 10 talk for a while there. I know he's kind of – he's in the middle, kind of the board where it's going. He can post. He's out in space. He puts a lot of effort in the defensive side. You'll see it from his steals, his blocks. I think he can make an impact on that side. He's able to shoot from the mid-range. And, hey, his three per percentage is not great. But when you watch him in the open, when he's open, he can knock down some shots. I think if he consistently get that a little higher up there, I think he's there. I think he's got a modern skill set. 
And I think if he adds a three-point shot, now that opens up his ceiling. So if he just stays where he's at, I think he's a solid player. He's gonna get he's gonna have to get some weight on him if he's gonna be playing in that in that forward role. But if he can open up that three-point shot, I'm all I'm all aboard. And I like your pick. Jeremy Sokon to me is the better of the two. Baylor freshman, uh, with Brown having some shaky performances in the NCAA tournament. Um, but I'm going to choose a guy that I have a little bit higher than, than SoCon and does the same things that are there for defense. Uh, and Tari Eason really exploded in his sophomore year. Uh, coming off the bench, it gave you a block, giving you two steals, uh, just really versatile uh, defender and what you are looking for in the NBA now. You would want his um, shooting to improve. Um, but he he's has winning intangibles and – uh, you go SoCon, I go Eason at 17, and I'm curious to see who you got at 18. I'm just going to take the other guy. I'm going to take Kendall Brown. I'm going to take from Baylor. Like, <laughs> I'm going for very, Baylor. <laughs> I think they're close. You know what I mean? Like, when you're looking at yes. him, I think, I think Brown's very athletic. I think he's more athletic. I think he's got good legs. I think he's going to be a very good NBA player. And he's, he and I think, player. again, you know how I am with defense. Like, he's a very good transitional defense. He's a standout defender. Like, when you're watching him play – he does the things that you like to see there. And I think his physical profile is an elite, above the rim guy, great vertical explosion, quick twitch. He's got all that things. I think he has a good idea of where he needs to be on the offensive side. Obviously, yeah. that's something that's going to need to be improved. I do see that. I did see like Gerald Green as a comp, but I don't hate that comp. I think he's got to be, a, you know, 34%, you know, three point percentage. Obviously, you want to see him get his free throw percentage up there. He's got a nice feel for the game, though. He's, he's a straight line driver, too, though, coach. He's, I love these straight line drivers, but he, he can kind of be creative at some points. Didn't really have that at the Baylor offense. You didn't really see him do that. So that's something that you want to see in his game. But hey, I think he's a, he's got athlete elite athleticism so if he can be that and be that kind of that wing that wing prospect out there i'm all i'm all he's a damn good cutter too i saw yeah. Corey mcgetty being a comp ah, so. Corey <laughs> mcgetty old school all you youngins go look up Corey mcgetty please and i think he's he's got a pretty good shot i think that it, it, in the league uh you'll see kind of that three-point percentage going up yeah. more um but he does he he doesn't like you said straight line drive he doesn't have any moves no. um Not, no, at, no. A lot of these guys don't got a lot of moves, Coach. Yeah. At 19, uh, the San Antonio Spurs select EJ Lydell. <laughs> he just seems like a, a Spurs type of guy and someone that has gotten better each and every season at Ohio State. So you're taking the two uh, Baylor guys. I took Eason. Uh, I took uh, Agabi. And now give me Lydell. I think that if you, you tell him that his left hand is weak, um, he's going to go out there and improve it. Um he shows that he can be a small forward, power forward defender. He was blocking 2.6 shots a game, 49% from the field. He's very efficient. He grabs boards, gave you 19 a game. Uh, I Another Big Ten guy. I, I, I guess I'm just going to pick all the Big Ten guys. But uh, EJ Lydell at 19, I think this is a safe pick in a safe spot uh, for the Buckeye. All right. I'll, so at 20, um, I'm going to take our oops, I'm going to take our guy, uh, Blake Wesley from from Notre Dame. And it's it's funny, like these guys like he's an old school kind of guard to me. He's got good size. I think he's got a good frame. Uh, he wasn't really a heralded guy coming into Notre Dame, but he looks really well. He's pretty agile. He's quick. He has the ability to penetrate into the lane. I think that his best his best skill set is getting to the lane and finishing um, in different ways. You see him kind of. You know, he gets stopped. He can still, you know, floater over the top. He good, does a good job of just, you know, pump faking, get in the, and get into the lane there. I, I do think that he's got good burst there too. A nice touch from mid range. I wouldn't necessarily call him a three point shooter, but he's got a good touch from mid range. I also, you know, as far as improvement goes, what is he? So 6'5, 185. You'd like to see him get a little stronger. I don't know if he's a playmaker facilitator, right? He could score. Like he's a scorer, but can he kind of be that next guy that's able to go off? You know, on ball, can he can he can facilitate there, or is this a guy that's just going to have to become that three point guy? And that's what you have from him. And I think that's the question mark with him. I think his game is raw, it's re unrefined. But at this point in the twenties, you're looking for a guy a little bit of upside that maybe you know it's like that analogy, like who can we kind of get to run the first base with better form? And I think that's for Blake, and that's what we're looking at at this spot. Yeah, and you're getting all freshmen here. Um, and <laughs> what that you didn't mention is his defense. That's what stood out to me. Yeah. I think he's a bull and a warrior out there. So, um, you go Blake Wesley. I'm actually gonna go get give me a freshman too. And this is the little guy, Kennedy Chandler. If he wasn't six foot tall, um, I see him as a lottery 
Uh, he does a little bit of everything. Uh, he dimes. He, he grabs some rebounds. He's a, a winner. He was the starting point guard on that team USA. Uh, that one goal, which had the winning MVP. Uh, every time I watched uh, Tennessee, and I, I watched a lot of games because one of their players uh, used to play in the uh, for my alma mater, uh, the starting uh, power forward. And it, every time he just stood out. Uh, with his moves and uh, ability to create some separation, it, it kind of is CP esque. Uh, I'm not going to call him Chris Paul, but it, some of his game reminds me of a young Chris Paul with uh, just being the super alpha PG. And um, yeah, he's six foot, but he's got his six five wingspan. So I think that uh, although he needs to get bigger, I think he'll compete. And I think he's a winner. And I think that one of these really good teams just found themselves in amazing backup point guard. So give me Kennedy Chandler at 21. All right, 22. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to screw this up. But Nick Nikola Jovic. Jovic, okay? Listen, let, let me have you ever heard of a Serbian playing point forward before? Have you ever heard of this? Cuz I have. I I have. He's pretty good in the NBA. Um, now I'm not going to compare this guy um to to that level of MVP status yet, but 6'10 209 kid, you know, when you watch him play and you watch his highlights from FIBA I mean, he does a really good job. I think, like I said, he's a point forward. He can lead the fast break, initiates the offense. Uh, he's really crafty. Like, his handles are very good. Uh, he, he has that ball handling. He has a pretty good first step when you watch him play. He's versatile. He's not one of those guys that's not athletic. I think he is very versatile when you're looking at him. He's not a big wingspan guy, but he's going to be able to be that point forward for a lot of teams. And I do think he opens it up. And I think with the success of these other guys that we've seen internationally, even Giddy and these other guys, I think that teams are are – are drafting these guys and saying, okay, how do we fit them in our roster and how can we build around players like this if he feels that? So if he gets drafted by a team that has a plan for him, man, I think he could be very good. He has good reads of the ball, very good passer, outside shot, those type of things. He's got a really good outstanding three-point shot. Yeah. That's what it is. He's 6'10". He can really snipe it. Um, so I could see somebody in the 20s definitely falling in love. At 23, Jaden Hardy, he's fallen too far. Uh, in my opinion, it was, yes, it was rough, inefficient. Uh, he shoots bad shots, but he has an ability, um, almost uncanny in this draft um, with his range and it, his ability to create separation. His high school tapes are legendary already. Um, and I thought he just got better as the season progressed. It was a really hard hit. I think he will develop. And I think he's going to be a, a damn good starting guard in the NBA. Uh, now, I don't think he kind of poses winning ways, and maybe he'll have to transition to kind of being an off-the-bench scorer type, um, instant offense, kill the second unit. Uh, but I think at 6'4", 198, he sh definitely shows promise. He just needs um, to get better at at all facets of the game, and it's really just efficiency uh, driven. So at 23, I'll roll the dice on uh, Jaden Hardy. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't hate that pick. I think we're getting in that range where, okay, where are we drafted some of these guys, um, and, and we're doing off athleticism. So uh, I agree. So my twenty four, um, I'm gonna mess this up, Coach Mar Marjan, Marjan Bo Bochamp. Bochamp, okay. That's why and I'm here. That's why I got your back, Coach. Everybody out there, it's not that I don't know these players. I'm terrible with pronouncing names. Coach can attest. Like I'm just not. I'm just yeah, not Giannis. And just the coin bow. Yeah, I, I, I know. I'm a teacher. If you ever seen Key and Pell, 100, percent it's me. All right, so Marjan, <laughs> if we're looking at him, like, hey, six six. I think that you know he played in the G League. He's kind of out of the spotlight though this year, in my in my opinion. Like, you know, I, he's one of these guys when they go to the G League. You know, what can they do? He he has a reported seven foot wingspan. So if that's the case, I mean, you're looking at his physical tools at the NBA level. You like to see there. They use him a lot. You saw him be a slasher in the G League. You know, when I was watching some of his games um, over yes. time, he's a, he's a wing. But plus athleticism slasher. Like, that's just kind of where he saw. I think he can finish above the rim. I think he has that. He has that attitude. He's shown promise, you know, at times from mid range. He's got to fix it. I don't know if he's going to be able to fix his three point shooting. I think that's one of those things. I think he could catch and shoot pretty well. Um, but, you I know, I think he's got in, some good form. It's just, he does. Uh, it didn't click. It didn't click. So, again, that's where you're looking at. Okay, so have he developed for a year of the Ignite? Can he kind of take that next step and be there? I think he's active defensively. If he's got the size, man, if you have the seven-foot wingspan, you got you you can you can make it in the NBA. Uh, and he was the best player for the G League Ignite for a long part uh, that yeah. season. He got injured towards the end. Um, but 
it, it, on in transition. He's a beast. Uh, he's somebody that I, I considered getting a little bit earlier, but it seems to be a theme in this draft that there are a lot of small four, power forward, versatile yeah. uh, players. And at 25, uh, Patrick Baldwin a Jr., who before the season started was mentioned in the top five, top ten um, on everybody's list, uh, an elite shooter, um, had a very rough uh, freshman campaign playing his dad when he chose to go to Milwaukee for, you know, I guess, you know, to go play for your pop. But it didn't go well. There's really no excuse for him shooting 34 percent and 25 from deep when he's known for shooting. It was bad, and he got injured down the stretch. But I think you have a potential, like he, he reminds me of uh, Michael Porter Jr. Light, like he's you know six nine, six ten, and can really shoot the ball and be in that size and having that pure of a form. Uh, I give me, I'll roll the dice, and maybe Patrick Baldwin works out for me, and I I drafted well, so maybe the Memphis Grizzlies pick him. <laughs> Since I they mean, since they can't miss on a draft pick, they can't. No, they're just they're crushing it out here. Uh, all right, let's go to twenty six. So I'm at twenty six. I think uh, this is going to be gross. So I'm just going to warn everybody out there. I'm going to take Walker Kessler. I'm just going to. I guess I'm going to take every big in the draft. Uh, and you know, seven one two forty five. Uh, he was a sophomore. He transferred from UNC. You know, him and Jabari though they they formed a pretty good front court group at, at Auburn, and you saw that ability. I think you know you see you have his top game down there: twenty points, ten rebounds, seven blocks. I mean, he's a big time center, right? So when you're looking at what he can do, I think he contribute both sides. He's got good impact. Um, he's a, you're pretty you know on the offensive end, he's he's kind of like a forward, but he's a he's a center like in terms of he can handle himself a little bit in the open court. He's got nice touch around the rim. I do like what he can do around the rim. I think he finishes very well for a big. Uh, he's he's got to expand his range. So when you're looking at him, I think this is a seven footer. Can he expand his range? In looking at him, his high school tapes, he he was, used to be hitting the three. Yeah. So it's crazy how that kind of didn't transition in college. But you know, he was the best defender in all of college basketball, blocking four point six uh, shots. I I see insane. some lateral things that are yeah. question. <laughs> he's kind of throwback big, but. Um, at 26, we're doing this on potential. Uh, I'm not mad at you. At 27, uh, somebody that was very, I guess, inconsistent this season. They ended up with a, a really good game down the stretch in the Final Four. Uh, that is uh, Trevor Keels out of Duke. So I'm stealing another Dukey from Kevin. Um, but what I like about Trevor Keels, 6'5", 220, I think that he can be a point guard and he's a bruiser. Uh, he he punishes you. Um, he's got a cat quick first step, um, and he really competes on the defensive end. So he he could be a, a three and D if he develops his, his shot a little bit more. Um, but he can also uh, penetrate. So his playmaking need, needs to improve. His decision making and his just his overall consistency. Um, but I don't see him coming back uh, to Duke if you, you know you have a, a first round or top thirty five grade. Well, he better not come back to Duke because he's not going to start. But yeah, I'm, I'm, we're not going to go to. We're not. We'll go. We. I'll, I'll move on. All right, twenty-eight. I'm going to take my boy Max Christie. So you know, Michigan State kid. I thought you know, in terms again, coaches write about this. I don't see like the guard play. Like it's interesting to see. Like we don't see a lot of true ones on this on this in this draft, in my opinion. After the couple of the top guys, you know, you're looking at these guys. They're all six six one ninety coach or six six two hundred. Like that's what we're seeing here. Um, and I, I think that he has that long, langy talent. You know, he's got a great ability to kind of create his own shot. They were games, though. Like, you had that Nebraska game that he played. Like, there were games where he really, really played well. Um, I remember watching, I think, the first game against Grand Valley State, and he really kind of showed out a little bit, you know, athletically. Um, mid-range. I like his mid-range game. Someone said he, like, minds him of, like, C.J. McCollum mid-range, showing siftiness, ability to score. And I, and I think that's lofty expectations. But I could see that ability kind of in the mid-range area. Biggest concern with him is his frame. Like, he's got to fill out. I think he's going to have to have – he's got upside to grow in that frame, but he's going to have to fill out there. And his his shot it speaks for itself. It's very pure. I know he shot 31.7%, yeah. but it just looks really clean. I think he could benefit from another year in college. Um, but he – I'm sure he's getting first-round calls or it, early second. I, I'm surprised you took him over uh, Bryce McCowan since Bryce just – it seemed like he had more of an offensive package playing the same position in six, seven, but he played on a bad Nebraska team. They just kind of gave him the ball. But since it's my last pick, I, I just got to squeeze in 
the Baltimore native at 29, Justin Lewis, uh, 6'7", 245. I think that he can play the, the three to four. He really had a breakout sophomore year. Uh, he can rebound well. Uh, I think he's a, a tough competitor. I think that it, it, he works on his game hard enough that he's going to polish up his shot and really become an effective NBA player, uh, most likely coming off the bench. But give me Justin Lewis at 29. And our yeah. last pick of the first round, Kevin, you got pick number 30. Yeah, you just you stole my thunder. It was cool. I was going to take Bison Gomes. Oh, okay. uh, that's where I was going to have. I mean, I think those two guys are very interchangeable. I think he's got – he's good NBA prospect length. He was on a shitty Nebraska team, so let's just keep that out there. But when you watch him play, his athleticism is there. And, you know, I think he's got good basketball instincts too. He's wired to score the ball. He's a scorer. So he needs to improve his shooting, his three-point percentage. But I, I also think his percentages took a little bit of a hit because he had to shoot a lot. And when you watch him play, he was that he was their scorer there. Good dribble drive game. I think he fits well in the dribble guys there. He's scary in open court. I think he has that. Uh, he's got promise as a shooter. I, I was I was talking to I was not talking because I don't have that kind of skill yet. But I was listening to the scouts and they were talking about his ability um, that they like his his effort and they love that he has that kind of they believe he projects as a high volume three-point shooter just not yet and i think that's where you get a guy in the late in the late round first round could you imagine with one of these teams and he could just develop and get you know better shooting uh, imagine maybe if he found his way to like the nets or these other teams there um or anybody anybody in that back end and then you develop him he's a scorer but then he can get that three-point shot so I, I like bryce i wanted to get him in the first round um and you know i think that he fits the nba pretty well yeah, and I think it's a lock in the first round. So for him to go 30, I don't think yeah. he's going to even drop that far. He had 11 games where he had at least 20 points. So he can really score the ball in that 6-7. Well, I mean, there's still names that, that didn't get selected. Jalen Jalen Williams, Christian Brown. I don't see him falling out the first round. Jean Montero. So there's just so many names. We'll see what happens uh, come draft day. Um, but this was fun, Kev. It was, it was nice. Yeah, it was fun. It, Chilling, hanging out, and um, kind of just shooting, shooting the shit a little bit about our 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 picks. We'll see who's right, who's wrong. We can always uh, play down the tape uh, later on. So, you yeah. got anything to plug on the way out? No, you know, just uh, obviously subscribe to the channel, but also I do think that there's a clear tier break after the four guys, and it'll be interesting to see, like, after Ivy Smith, Boncaro, Holmgren, who's going to go there. But I'm interested to see the lottery because I think that's going to definitely tell us where we go. Um, and you know, I think that the lottery is going to tell us landing spot dependent. Hey, where's check going to go in these guys, but looking at how bad these teams are at the top, like one of these four guys could really elevate these teams to a playoff team next year, based on the talent they had last year. So that's going to be exciting to see NBA is in good hands. This is a good class. Shout out triple play fantasy, all the things, uh, moving on the YouTube channel. Uh, Josh Lloyd came on and we had, you know, fantasy awards, uh, that dropped yesterday. I was really good i dropped my big board so some of the guys that weren't mentioned in this first round um i, I go through my top 60 um i'll have a 3.0 sometime and then uh next month we find out uh where the lottery balls fall and we'll have a, a more improved uh a 2.0 mock draft based on teams and team fit um and uh, kevin and i will be here to deliver that um once that news drops uh in the meantime, continue to love the game of basketball like we do. Enjoy the NBA playoffs. Um, and now a little mention from one of our sponsors, Odds Jam. This video is being sponsored by Odds Jam. Odds Jam is an innovative solution designed to identify odds that make you the winner every single time. They have the fastest real-time data to spot discrepancies between different sports books and help users place risk-free bets. Profits average 3% every day, which adds up to big earnings. So how does Odds Jam work? Well, Odds Jam processes the odds over 1 million odds a minute to find the selected few profitable betting opportunities. You as the user will then receive notifications of these opportunities in real time. Finally, you'll place your bets on multiple sports books to cover all possible outcomes. That way, no matter who wins, you do. And so how are you ready to experience the risk-free profits for yourself? Well, what you can do is you can go to, to oddsjam.com and if you use referral code triple play, you'll be able to get a seven day free trial to access this stuff for yourself. So make sure you check them out today. Now let's get back to the video. That's it uh, for Kevin. I'm James. We'll see you next time. Peace.